Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's both intriguing and important, scrub typhus. It's a disease that might not be as well known as some others, but it's definitely worth learning about. So, let's jump right in. What is scrub typhus? Scrub typhus is an infectious disease caused by the bacterium Orientia sutsugamushi. It is primarily transmitted to humans through the bites of infected chiggers, which are tiny mites commonly found in areas with tall grasses and vegetation, known as scrub. The disease presents with symptoms such as high fever, headache, muscle aches, and a characteristic skin rash. If left untreated, scrub typhus can lead to severe complications, including pneumonia, organ failure, and central nervous system involvement. About Causal Agent of Scrub Typhus The causative agent of scrub typhus, Orientia sutsugamushi, is a type of bacteria that belongs to the family Rickettsiaceae. Here's a brief overview of its structure and morphology. Morphology Orientia sutsugamushi is an obligate intracellular bacterium, which means it can only replicate and survive within the cells of a host organism. It is classified as a member of the genus Orientia, previously considered a type of Rickettsia. The bacterium is quite small, typically ranging in size from 0.5 to 1.0 micrometers. Cellular structure. The cellular structure of Orientia sutsugamushi is similar to other bacteria in the family Rickettsiaceae. It has a cell wall that encloses the bacterial cell, but this cell wall lacks peptidoglycan, a key component found in the cell walls of many other bacteria. This unique feature is one of the reasons why Orientia sutsugamushi was classified as a separate genus. Life cycle. Orientia sutsugamushi has a complex life cycle that involves two main stages, the elementary body, EB, and the reticulate body, RB. Elementary bodies, EBs, elementary bodies are the dormant, infectious form of Orientia sutsugamushi. They are small, compact, and resistant to environmental stressors, allowing them to survive outside of host cells. Elementary bodies are the form of the bacterium that can be transmitted from chigger mites to humans during the chigger's feeding process. They are responsible for initiating infection in the host. When an infected chigger bites a human, it introduces elementary bodies into the host's bloodstream. The elementary bodies then enter various cells within the host's body, where they can replicate and cause illness. Reticulate bodies, RBs, reticulate bodies are the actively replicating form of Orientia sutsugamushi. They are larger and less resistant to environmental stressors compared to elementary bodies. Once inside host cells, elementary bodies transform into reticulate bodies. These reticulate bodies actively replicate within vacuoles inside the host cells, called an inclusion. Reticulate bodies are responsible for the bacterium's multiplication within host cells. They undergo multiple rounds of division, leading to an increase in bacterial numbers. Reticulate bodies' replication within host cells and the formation of vacuoles protects them from the host's immune response, allowing the bacterium to evade immediate detection. How Scrub Typhus Transmits Scrub typhus is primarily transmitted to humans through the bites of infected chiggers, which are tiny mites belonging to the Trombiculidae family. Here's how the transmission process occurs. Infected Rodents The natural reservoirs of Orientia sutsugamushi, the bacterium causing scrub typhus, are small mammals like rodents. These rodents carry the bacteria and act as hosts, allowing the bacteria to multiply within them. Chigger Infestation Chiggers are parasitic larvae of certain mite species. These larvae become infected with bacteria, Orientia sutsugamushi when they feed on the blood of infected rodents. The bacteria then proliferate within the chigger larva. Human Exposure When humans venture into areas with tall grasses, bushes, and vegetation, they may come into contact with chigger-infested environments. Chiggers are most active in warm and humid conditions, commonly found in scrubby and rural areas. Chigger larva bites. The chigger larvae attach themselves to human skin, often at sites where clothing is tight or where the skin is thinner, such as around the waist, ankles, and behind the knees. They then bite the host and inject digestive enzymes that cause skin cells to break down, facilitating the chigger's feeding process. Bacterial transmission. During the feeding process, if the chigger is infected with Orientia sutsugamushi, the bacteria can be transmitted to the host's bloodstream. The bacteria can then enter various cells, particularly endothelial cells that line blood vessels, and start replicating. It's important to note that while chiggers are the primary mode of transmission, direct person-to-person -person transmission of scrub typhus is rare. Pathogenicity of scrub typhus. Here's an overview of how scrub typhus causes illness. Infection and entry. When chigger mites infected with Orientia sutsugamushi bite a human, the bacteria are introduced into the bloodstream through the bite site. The bacteria primarily target endothelial cells that line blood vessels, but they can also infect other cell types. Adhesion and invasion. Orientia sutsugamushi adheres to the surface of host cells and is then internalized through a process called endocytosis. Once inside the host cell, 
the bacteria are protected from the immune system's immediate detection. Intracellular replication. Inside the host cells, the bacteria transform into reticulate bodies, RBs, and begin to replicate within membrane-bound vacuoles called inclusions. These inclusions help shield the bacteria from the host's immune responses. Immune response activation. As the bacteria replicate, the host's immune system recognizes the infection and activates various immune responses. Immune cells release cytokines and chemokines, signaling molecules that recruit other immune cells to the site of infection. Endothelial activation. The infection triggers an inflammatory response that causes activation of the endothelial cells lining blood vessels. This activation can lead to increased vascular permeability, allowing immune cells to migrate more easily to the infection site. Systemic effects. The inflammatory response and immune activation can lead to fever, chills, muscle aches, and other flu-like symptoms associated with scrub typhus. Immune evasion strategies. The bacteria, Orientia sutsugamushi employs various strategies to escape the host's immune system. For example, it can alter the surface proteins on its outer membrane, making it harder for the immune system to recognize and target the bacterium. What are the symptoms of scrub typhus? The onset of symptoms typically occurs about 6 to 21 days after being bitten by an infected chigger. Here are the common symptoms associated with scrub typhus. Fever. High fever is one of the hallmark symptoms of scrub typhus. The fever can spike suddenly and reach temperatures of 102 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Headache. Intense headaches are frequently reported by individuals with scrub typhus. These headaches can range from mild discomfort to severe and throbbing pain. Muscle and joint pain. Muscle aches, myalgia, and joint pain, arthralgia, are common symptoms. These pains can be generalized or localized and are often described as aching or soreness. Rash. Many people with scrub typhus develop a rash, which typically appears a few days after the onset of fever. The rash usually starts on the trunk and spreads to other parts of the body. Chills. Chills and shivering can accompany the fever and are often followed by episodes of sweating. Fatigue. Fatigue and weakness are common throughout the course of the illness. Patients may feel exhausted and have reduced energy levels. Swollen lymph nodes. Enlarged lymph nodes, especially in the region near the site of the chigger bite, can be observed. Cough and breathing difficulties. Some individuals may develop a dry cough and experience breathing difficulties, which could be due to lung involvement. Gastrointestinal symptoms. Nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and diarrhea can occur, although they are less common and may mimic other gastrointestinal illnesses. Complications. In severe cases, the infection can lead to complications such as pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, multi-organ failure, and central nervous system involvement. How to diagnose scrub typhus. Clinical evaluation. A healthcare provider will begin by assessing the patient's medical history, including recent travel to scrubby areas or exposure to chigger-infested environments. Physical examination. During the physical exam, the healthcare provider will look for characteristic signs of scrub typhus, including fever, rash, and enlarged lymph nodes. Serological tests. Blood tests are crucial for diagnosing scrub typhus. ELISA tests are commonly used to detect antibodies against Orientia sutsugamushi. Molecular tests. Polymerase chain reaction PCR, tests can detect the genetic material of the bacterium in blood or tissue samples. PCR is useful for confirming the presence of bacteria, Orientia sutsugamushi and identifying the specific strain. Wild Felix test. This test involves checking for agglutination, clumping, a bacteria when a patient's serum is mixed with certain proteus bacteria. While it's an older method, it can sometimes provide supporting evidence of scrub typhus infection. Imaging studies. In severe cases, imaging studies like chest X-rays might be performed to assess lung involvement or to monitor complications such as pneumonia or acute respiratory distress syndrome ARDS. What is treatment for scrub typhus? Doxycycline. This is often the first-line antibiotic treatment for scrub typhus. It is effective against bacteria, Orientia sutsugamushi and is usually given as a daily dose for about 7 to 14 days. Doxycycline is generally well tolerated by most individuals. Azithromycin. Azithromycin is an alternative antibiotic for scrub typhus treatment, especially for individuals who cannot tolerate doxycycline or in cases of resistance. Chloramphenicol. In some regions, chloramphenicol might be used if other antibiotics are not available or if there are concerns about resistance. However, chloramphenicol has potential side effects and is typically reserved for cases where other options are not suitable. Early initiation of antibiotic treatment and completing the full course of antibiotics is prescribed by the healthcare provider is essential to ensure the complete eradication of the bacteria. In severe cases where patients have developed complications like pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, or organ failure, supportive care in a hospital setting might be required. 
How to prevent scrub typhus. Wear protective clothing. When you're in areas with tall grasses, vegetation, and known chigger habitats, wear long-sleeved shirts, long pants, socks, and closed shoes. Use insect repellent. Apply an insect repellent containing DEET, N, N-diethylmetatoluamide, or permethrin to exposed skin and clothing. Avoid chigger-prone areas. If possible, avoid spending time in areas with dense vegetation, tall grasses, and scrubby environments, especially during the chigger's peak activity times. Inspect clothing and body. After spending time in potential chigger-infested areas, carefully inspect your clothing, shoes, and body for any chiggers. Keep surroundings clean. Reduce chigger habitats around your living space by maintaining a clean and well-trimmed yard. Protect pets. Chiggers can also attach themselves to pets and be brought indoors. Regularly groom and inspect your pets for chiggers, especially after they've been outdoors. Use bed nets. If you're staying in accommodations with inadequate protection against chiggers, consider using bed nets to prevent chiggers from coming into contact with you while you sleep. Awareness and education. Be aware of the risk factors for scrub typhus and educate yourself about the disease, its symptoms, and preventive measures. This knowledge can help you make informed decisions to protect yourself. Travel precautions. If you're traveling to regions where scrub typhus is prevalent, take extra precautions to avoid chigger bites. Plan your activities and clothing choices accordingly. Prompt medical attention. If you experience symptoms such as fever, headache, muscle aches, and rash after being in chigger-prone areas, seek medical attention promptly for proper diagnosis and treatment. Conclusion. Remember, awareness and preventive measures are key to staying safe. If you suspect you might have scrub typhus or are experiencing symptoms, don't hesitate to consult a medical professional. If you found this video informative, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more health-related content. Thanks for tuning in, and stay safe out there.